The Beatles' Eleanor Rigby is perhaps one of the most celebrated songs of all time, allowing us to saunter through the lives of the lonely characters that live in its lyrics. Realizing that every passerby lives a life as vivid and complex as our own, and often shares our feelings for being lonesome. Originally appearing on Revolver and the double A-side single, along with Yellow Submarine, Eleanor Rigby is a haunting retelling of the timeless nature of human loneliness and begs the question, where do the lonely belong? Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been, lives in a dream, waits at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Who is it for? Lyrics like these send a shiver through my spine as they sullenly march along, unraveling the tale of Eleanor. As the story unfurls, we see that life and happiness still carries on at a wedding that has just taken place. But all that love, family, togetherness is not for her. Eleanor picking up the rice, thrown in celebration, alludes to her desire for company, but as it is said, she lives in a dream. And although she waits at the window with a presentable face, no one will come to visit Eleanor. Who is the face for? The only companion she will ever know is Father Mackenzie, a fastidious priest who writes sermons in vain, no congregation to preach to. And in the end, it is he that will be Eleanor's last human connection, but ironically, Perhaps cynically, it is only because it is his obligation to bury her when she died. No one was saved. Truly, remarkably, devastating lyrics for a haunting story. But lyrics are lonely as well without musical companionship, and the inception of this song starts with Paul McCartney. He says, I wrote it at the piano, just vamping an E minor chord, letting that stay as a vamp and putting a melody over it, just danced over the top of it. It has almost Asian Indian rhythms. Although Paul only had placeholder lyrics and verbal sounds for the song, fellow musician Donovan remembers hearing an early version of Eleanor Rigby. He says, One day I was on my own in the pad. The doorbell rang. It was Paul on his own. We jammed a bit. He played me a tune about a strange chap called Ola Natungi. Ola Natungi, blowing his mind in the dark with a pipe full of clay. No one can say. Paul McCartney often used random phrases with appropriate syllabic cadences as lyrical placeholders in his songs. Most notably, Scrambled Eggs, originally taking the place of yesterday's lyrics. Scrambled Eggs. Oh my baby. But this one, although beginning with the strange Ola Natungi, Paul shines a light on where the lyrics we now know came from. Paul says, While I was fiddling on a chord, some words came out. Dazi di dazu picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been. This idea of someone picking up rice after a wedding took it in that poignant direction, into a lonely people direction. So we have the concept, but who is Eleanor Rigby and Father Mackenzie? Originally, Paul used the name Miss Daisy Hawkins, but eventually traded it in for Eleanor after Eleanor Braun, the female lead in Help, the movie, and Rigby from a store name in Bristol, Rigby and Evans, wine and spirit shippers. He had seen that shop while visiting Jane Asher while she made an appearance at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre. However, as most of us come to know, Eleanor Rigby was serendipitously an actual person, Paul says. I thought, I swear, that I had made up the name Eleanor Rigby like that. I remember quite distinctly having that name Eleanor, looking around for a believable surname and then wandering around the docklands in Bristol and seeing the shop there. But it seems that up in Woolton Cemetery, where I used to hang out a lot with John, there's a gravestone to an Eleanor Rigby. Apparently, a few yards to the right, there's someone called Mackenzie. And funny enough, the Woolton Cemetery is right next to St. Peter's Church in Liverpool, the very same church John Lennon was introduced to Paul McCartney in 1957, and the real Eleanor Rigby was born in 1895 and lived in Liverpool. How coincidental. And Father Mackenzie? Well, it was originally supposed to be Father McCartney, but Paul decided against it. 
Paul says, I had Father McCartney as the priest just because I knew that was right for the syllables, but I knew I didn't want it even though John liked it. So we opened the telephone book, went to McCartney, and look what followed it. And shortly after, it was Mackenzie. I thought, oh, that's good. It wasn't written about anyone. John wanted to stay McCartney, but I said, no, it's my dad, Father McCartney. He said, it's good. It works fine. I agreed it worked, but I didn't want to sing that. It was too loaded. It asked too many questions. I wanted it to be anonymous. John helped me on a few words, but I'd put it down 80-20 to me. Something like that. And guess what? You know how Paul has been saying that a few songs like In My Life and others that seemed to be mainly John were actually collaborations between the two? John Lennon was pretty open about the seemingly mainly Paul song had a lot of John lyrics. And even though in an interview Paul McCartney sarcastically states John contributed about half a line to Eleanor Rigby, John has this to say about his contribution to the song. And since it's so loaded, I think I'll read this one to you on camera. Ah. The first verse was his, and the rest are basically mine. But the way he did it, well, he knew he had a song, but by that time, he didn't want to ask for my help. And we were sitting around with Mal Evans and Neil Aspinall, so he said to us, hey, you guys, finish up the lyrics. I was insulted and hurt that Paul had thrown it out in the aid. He actually meant he wanted me to do it. And of course, there isn't a line of theirs in the song because I finally went off to a room with Paul and we finished the song. But that's how, that's the kind of insensitivity he would have, which upset me in later years. That's the kind of person he is. Here, finish these lyrics up, like to anybody who was around. Oh, he had the whole start. Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been, and he had the story and he knew where it was going. So we had to work out, well, is there anybody else in the story? It's hard to describe, even with the clarity of memory, the moment the apple falls. The thing will start moving along at a speed of its own, then you wake up at the end of it and have this whole thing on paper, you know? Who said what to whom as we're writing, I don't know. I do know that George Harrison was there when we came up with the, ah, look at all the lonely people. He and George were settling on that as I left the studio to go to the toilet. And I heard the lyric and turned around and said, that's it. This is definitely one of those tricky stories where both John and Paul's accounts make sense, but we really just don't know. But John does give credit for one of the best parts of the song to Paul, the orchestral music. John says, the violin's backing was Paul's idea. Jane Asher had turned him on to Vivaldi, and it was very good, the violins, straight out of Vivaldi. I can't take any credit for that at all. It wasn't just Paul who made the song an incredible orchestral piece, but also George Martin, who along with Paul wrote an arrangement inspired by the music of Bernard Herrmann for the film Fahrenheit 451. Despite the competition for who wrote what for Eleanor Rigby, to me it is one of the Beatles' most treasured compositions. It has an ethereal reverence to life and loneliness, and created characters we can truly see. I've said it so many times before, but I think my favorite thing about the Beatles songs is the stories they tell. And that is my love letter to Eleanor Rigby. If you enjoy these videos and want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. My videos will always be free and this is a great way to help me make them better for you. Check out my debut album, The Holly Hobbs, on Spotify and Apple Music, and click the like button, subscribe, and notification bell because that is the best way to get notified when a new video is released. See you next time.